This episode of Bustin' with the Boys, the Boys, is presented by Barstool Sports. Get up there, Max. Come here. Good girl. So this is a, this is a uh, Bustin' with the Boys second. Mm-hmm. We got Maggie. What kind of dog is that? A yellow Labrador? Yeah, we think she's lab part Greyhound, man. No way. Yeah. What part of the what part of that says Greyhound to you? Skinny face. Got that skinny she face. That skinny face. She's. And then, he said three years old. Yeah, we that think, dog's three years old. I thought when we pulled up, old. I was like, "Will goes, what the fuck? What's that dog doing there?" <laughs> and I was probably quizzes. He goes, "That's an old girl right there." <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's an, an old girl. girl. She's a spry chicken, man. She's she's like, what we think she is. We adopted her about shit. Actually, the first day of training camp, I went to run the conditioning test. My wife, she drove out to Cookville to adopt to adopt this one. Oh, she Cook, told hey, she Cookville. told you? No, she didn't. She didn't tell me. She just surprised me. She's like, I get back in the locker room. There's a photo of like selfie of her with the back seat. Like, hey, make sure this little deal's by your mouth. Got it. There's a photo of her like selfie in the back seat. Like, hey, we got a dog now. And you're and you're cool. And I'm with like, it. all right, we got a dog. Let's go. You're in, tra- you're in training camp, so I'm in training camp. Like, that's the last thing I'm 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 worried about. Cookville, that's where Rich Frowning's from, right? We've had a couple Cookvillians on here. Who else? Uh, fuck. Yep. Well, this is Definitely gonna look really good when they watch it. Uh, Jim. We Pencil? had Jim on. Yeah. 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 yeah Jim yeah. who? Hensel? Jim Hensel. Mental guy. Oh, I wasn't here. Yeah, yeah, you weren't at that one. It Sorry, me, Jim. Me and Chandler. Swing and a miss. Dude, Cookville's dope. I've never been to Cookville, but yeah. uh, Rich was showing us like pictures. She's He's got like her. this huge ranch or this big farm and it's got like a, he had this giant slip and slide that you use on 4th of July and they slide down it. Yeah, it's kind of rad. Dude, they're they're good people out there. They wrote like a, they interviewed Megan and they sent us a article newspaper article with her and they like max titan player adopts dog from cookville and they like sent it to us and they sent like a big like titans collar thing it's yeah it's cool do you fall nice. in love right away where you're like this is this dog i mean the no, dog loves you really. to death. like she well she was really close with my wife and and so she left today so now it's just us two right now yeah and uh She's but like, at first she didn't even like really like me touching her Really? Yeah, she was really skittish for me. Was she like a have a little deal? She with would just follow like my that? wife around. We don't. We don't the know. Big male. Yeah, maybe we don't a, know. Maybe it's a guy thing. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe a guy it's a guy thing. thing. Yeah. You are. You are. And you. You're like a classic like '80s offensive lineman, dude. You got that fucking vibe about you. Anytime we're in the the meal room, you got like two glasses of milk with you, two sandwiches. Like my milk, yeah. Dude, He's got the deep nasally like voice. You, you know got that I mean? fucking. You got that. You got that deal, bro. <laughs> you look good. Chested. I'm telling you what. So dogs from Cookville, that's sweet. That's the second this is the second dog we've had in the podcast. It's sick. But Maggie, you're much more well behaved than the last dog that was on our podcast, I'll be honest. He's a good girl. Yeah, Still Haggard, huh? Yeah. Haggard had to go, dude. He was too high energy. Too high energy, yeah. Yeah, we use this company, this company called Global Canine. And they're like they're solid place, too. Solid place. That's right. I remember you telling me about that. They specialize in like dogs. They like do they like protection dogs. Yeah. So like they're these dogs are so like customizable. It's so weird to say that about another being, but yeah, they can train like trainable. You yeah, can train them to do they're so custom anything. like yeah, you can train them to do anything, like bark once, bark twice when they hear a knock, like no you can make them sit, stay, like you can te- like some dogs know different languages. Yeah, yeah. They, they know you can say calls. a word and they'll oh. like get between your legs, lay down, and they lay down. If like, you step if you, forward, they crawl forward with yeah. you. If you step backwards, they're like defending with you. That sounds amazing. It's crazy off leash. And this dog was great. Like like Haggard was awesome. His name is Diablo. His original name was Diablo, and then we renamed him Haggard, which yeah. literally took a day and a half. Like the dog was like, they're "Cool, smart. that's they're my like, name they now." Know how boom, to learn. boom. Yeah. But the dog, he was like so high energy, and when yeah. is so little, my daughter. So he would get excited whenever I got home, or like Taylor. He got super attached to Taylor. And he would just bump and like knock over wind all the time. And she's falling over the place. He was high energy. I'm not around. Taylor's pregnant again. So we had a whole bunch of stuff going yeah. on. We're like, man, I don't know if this you is need it. A break, yeah. yeah, I don't know if this is it. Well, thankfully, a dog like that can like find another home. Cause, yeah. Because I, 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 dude, mean, you feel can, like such a yeah. terrible person uh, when you're like, man, I got to get this dog up. Got to get this animal up. Yeah. You loved him too. Yeah, he was cool. He was rad. Taylor just, was it all was so about much work. Him when he first got him. So yeah. much work. I remember, I remember you in that process, like, dude, check these dogs out. It's hard for me to love. Couché. It's hard for me to love these animals, man. Yeah. I was, uh, we went, were you with us when we went to Arizona last year? No. Nah. So we went to Arizona. We played Arizona and then we played 49ers. Obviously, it wasn't a good game. We lost both those games. Yeah. That was like three years ago because you weren't there either, huh? Yeah, I wasn't there. Yeah, I wasn't there. Yeah, so this is three years ago, two years ago, three years ago, whatever, before both y'all. And, um, I got a goldfish before and I named him Lunchbox. I fucking loved this goldfish, dude. He was unbelievable. <laughs> and Taylin, my wife, grabs like buys a filter yeah. for this for this fish. And I'm like, I don't know if beta fish need filters. You don't. 
is you put them in a bowl and they're solid. They live their lives. They're happy to see you. You yell at them every day to clean their room and they never do. It's like a fun little back and forth you get with them. Did and you I say, go, did you say you see it every day and they're happy to see you? Yeah. Dude, i tell you what, this <laughs> goldfish love it. I would come you. home. I was just chilling like, I no idea what's going fish. on. Yeah. Did you say it was a beta too? Like it's a beta fish, black? yeah. Well, I mean, I don't discriminate on the color of my fish. No, no, no. I'm saying like those dark colored, like they kill shit if you put yeah, it in Yeah, well, no, you put like two of them in there, they puff their cheeks out and they beat the shit out of them. It's like little boxing cheeks. <laughs> they beat the hell out of them. But like I had like a, he was like a, like a transparent blue. He was very beautiful. All right, he was a beautiful young boy. Yeah. His name was Lunchbox. And I left Arizona and I, I said to Taylor, and I said, do not like do what you want with our child. Yeah. Do what you want with your dog and do what you want with yourself. But nothing happens to this fish. And I left. I went to Arizona. We lost that game. Had like a back thing. I ended up actually missing part of that game. And then a couple of days later, we're practicing at ASU. I finished practice. Thank God I would not have been able to practice if I heard this news before. And she calls me and she's like, hey. And I was like, what? I knew right away. He sends it in the turt tone. You so knew I, right away. Knew I knew right coming. away. He knew, he knew bad news. She was goes. Coming. She goes. Hey, I go. What? <laughs> she goes. I. We need to talk about lunchbox. I was like, There's nothing to talk about. He's fine. She goes. Lunchbox got sucked into the. Oh. The filter, the filter, the filter that Taylor bought. That Taylor bought, and he died a horrible death. Oh, that's that, that'd be a bad way to go. Oh. I lunchbox. hung up the phone immediately. Hung up the phone. Told the boys they didn't care. Boys did not care. You think our Titans team is tight? We're not. Because those boys you, weren't, for, weren't with me when I lost the, mo the most special thing in my entire life, that fish. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's that was tough, back man. when you didn't have as many of the friends. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of friends back then, I guess, dude. <laughs> it's Heartbreak Hotel. I didn't have a lot of friends until you were here and you were here. Now I got friends. Revved it up, dude. Got to rev that boys. piece up. So anyway, the um, lunch boxes, all his stuff is still in the They're garage. Haggard. Yeah, it's haggard. It's a good yeah, little boy, yeah. though. Dude, he was a solid Beautiful boy. Dog. He actually handled himself very well. He had to tell him couche a lot. The yeah. one, the one, the one What's thing. What's couche? Couche means like lay down. Lay it's down like, it's like, like German, I think it's right? German. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're trying to play uh, spike ball. You ever played spike ball? Love spike ball. Oh, shit. I have a spike ball, ball, a spike so ball thing fun. in my car right now. Do you really? Yeah. We really? should get a game in right after this. Cool. Yeah, on the bus. In here? Yeah, just put it down. We'll break everything, dude. Like a seated spike ball. I wish Blossom was here. We go three on three. Taylor's boys are in town. It is painfully hot outside so fucking hot dude, it's like middle of july and taylor's got this dog outside haggard god bless his soul his heart he's alive um and he would just tell him to couche all the time like he never like we're hitting a ball around so he'd be laying there and see the ball and eventually he'd want to like get up because it's hot as shit outside yeah, yeah, yeah. and taylor right when he gets up no no couche couche get over here couche stop the game we, we'd have to stop the game and just watch taylor try and discipline this dog couche Good boy, good boy. Andrew like, all right, boys, we play two more points. He get no, Haggard. Hey, hey, Couche. Couche. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was a pain in the ass, bro. Yeah. Like, man, just he let wanted him go. to play. Yeah, like, he wanted to play. Yeah, yeah. Or let him go in the air conditioning inside. Or let him inside. go in the air conditioning. <laughs> They're like, no, no, we got to have him outside. Hey, Couche. <laughs> yeah, Taylor was doing something. I forget what she was doing, but I didn't want her. Because Haggard was a handful, bro. He's trying to help the crew you, out. We were setting up for uh, your birthday party, right? Because I brought the cake. It had to be something like that. Because I went and ran an errand and got that cake. It was like two, three days before camp started. So yeah. Yeah. for those of you who are wondering, my birthday is July 22nd, 1991. 20 years old. Super fucking young. Was this the best, Is this your favorite dog you've ever had in your entire life? No, the She's answer is no. Good. She's pretty good. How many dogs have you had? I've had two. I've had two. <laughs> two others or two total? This is the third. But this is this is me and my wife's dog, so this is like our favorite, like our dog. God, Not that like dog loves you, bro. Yeah, she's, she's a good girl. I'm kind of jealous. I wish I just had a dog with me to chill right now. I want to get a Chihuahua. Dude, name, when, we name got, when we got her, man, she was just all like, "Hey, keep that mouth close to that mic." Well, when we got her, man, <laughs> <laughs> when we got her, man, she was all like backbones and and rib bones sticking out. You know, no would, really, yeah, would would Damn. barely come out to you, and she's she's gotten really really comfortable with us and. We're stoked. We're stoked to have her, man. Mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. I'm glad my wife surprised me with it, that yeah. one day. Yeah, training no camp. doubt. And it was good for her in training camp because training camp's hard for hard for the for the girls. You know, like you Dude, go from all, all this yourself, time in the yeah. off season with them, and then boom, instantly you're back in football mode. Yeah, and it's tough to just like it's like cold turkey too. It's like quitting smoking like right away. Yeah, you're like, well. I guess I'll, gone see, I'll see you in January. Six months, yeah. yeah. You know, like, see you later. That's brutal, so dude. That, that was cool for her to be, be around how, this season. How'd you and your wife meet? Dude, we met in middle school. No way. Yeah, but we never dated the whole time. No, no, we never dated until until after college. She played cat and mouse. She, the whole time. she had to make sure you made it first. We were always like dating each other's friends, you know, just like never like really worked worked yeah. out. Yeah. But it was there was always something cool there, and then 
we got reconnected after college when I was when I was kind of going through my stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, which I can't wait to dive into. And it and it just it just worked, man. It was just it was it was meant to be, you know. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. I believe that. And so Mm -hmm. yeah, we're married. We got married April fifth last year. Coming up on one year. Really? And uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked on. Never got that invite. Let's fucking go. That's crazy, dude. (laughs) Never Never got that that invite. Damn. That's wild. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever, dude. Congrats. We just had a great time in Vegas. I can't believe it. We did. You know? we had, dude, that was an epic trip. Dude, that was such I a I felt blast. like I was back like in college with the boys. Like Day drinking every day. Day drinking, King's Cup, playing the games. Dude, the King's Cup was probably the best part of the whole deal. Yeah, except now we like have a little money to gamble and throw on the dice yeah. before like, you had none of that. Quiz and I were like our own two hype men. Really? Like, oh, dude, when Dennis would roll the dice, we pull it, put in like the don't pass line. Yeah. As soon as we were betting against Dennis, he literally, every time Dennis rolled, he hit seven first. <laughs> first. And you win, and then he hit a number, and then be like, nope, we're going to the don't pass line. And two rolls later, seven he hit again. seven. He, yeah, he, he's... Brutally bad. He, he had a rough weekend rolling. Like, and he'll be the first to tell you that, too. That was yeah. that was bad. He just ended up being, just skip me, because... I'm <laughs> yeah. screwing everyone. We actually had to talk him into passing. <laughs> well, like, just, to... just give it to me and tell How much did you guys have in the fine system to go? Like 20... Or is that what you guys did? Yeah, 26,000? Yeah, something like that. But like usually guys use it in the clubs and stuff like that. And I think you went to the club the first night. I went to the club the first night. And then I didn't I didn't even go to the club once. Then we didn't go. We went and saw Ron White. We saw Ron White. Yo, he's a beaut, isn't he? Yeah, he's he dude, here's the deal. Is <laughs> we were under the weather. I guess over the weather. I don't know what we were. I guess pretty banged up. Yeah. Pretty banged up. <laughs> at that point. I guess I don't banged up. We'll banged yeah, we up. were banged up, dude. Yeah. And so we get there, we're fired up. We're like, we get these giant pina colada. We buy, he has a, he has a tequila company, Number Juan, no free shout outs for uh, Ron White, but Number Juan tequila. And um, we get these giant pina coladas. I got a, I got a pina colada. You got a Marg? I did. Yeah, you had a Marg. Dennis got a Marg. Jack got a pina. And we're sitting there and we're all kind of excited. And then kind of like halfway through, like we're, you know, <laughs> Hen pecking our way through South America, dude. Just falling asleep, falling asleep. Dude. As Rome, as he's going, as he's in the Damn, middle of his bed. I seen dude. him live once, and I thought he was. He was funny. He yeah, is. He, dude, he is really funny. Good. He was really good. A lot I, of I enjoyed... dick jokes. A lot of pussy jokes. Yeah, yeah. A lot <laughs> of weird. A lot of weird like sexual jokes. A lot of like, weird sexual jokes. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right, Ron. I got but you. He's always got a cigar. He's always got a cigar about... whiskey, dude. Yeah. With tequila now. Yeah, yeah. He drinks tequila now. When he was talking about like how he eats pussy, but he's like. His buddies won't even eat their wives out unless they shower first. And he's like, I do it right after a workout. He goes, I like it, it a little he salty. Does, he's good at pausing too. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna oh, pause dude, it and he's just kind of bring in his yeah, drink. The drink is yeah. like the punchline yeah. yeah, yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes, I like it a little salty. It was keep, good. keep the salt shaker by the, the nightstand. Yeah, <laughs> and then the summertime put <laughs> number <laughs> in the night. And during the summertime, he keeps some limes there just in case when yeah. she's not looking. A little lime, a little salt, he's dude. Stay in Munchtown. Dude, no. oh, his last bit was funny too. What did you guys have to go through? What what would happen for you guys to have to pay a fine? Like, what was your guys' rules for paying fines? Getting mentioned we, in team we meetings? Have, yeah, being mentioned at team meetings is big. Uh, yeah. Anything that kind of like separates you from the group or like affects the group. <laughs> like farting in meetings. That's 20 that, bones. That, that's 20 bones. What was the highest fine penalty? Captain, probably. Captain's five grand. Captain's five grand. Five hundred. Oh, so if you get captain of the team, if you're considered for the, for the, yeah, for the week, grand? yeah, yeah. Oh, for the week, yeah. So did you have to pay? You you were no only, no no. It's like two fifty. Right? It's two fifty a game, and I think it totals up to gotcha. around whatever, be six seven thousand yeah. dollars. So whatever that is, that probably that's not even close. Any that's, media? Don't, do any not media check that math. It's not even fucking close. We weren't like super regimented in it. It's kind of like a lump sum every quarter, so we so we stay up on. It's our... uh, I think we're we're at the mercy of Ben, really. We really are at the mercy yeah, of Ben. Ben keeps track of everything, he, and he, based he on how he's he feeling does, that day, he like flips open a piece of paper like he's been tracking it down. <laughs> no, he's and he's not like, been tracking it he's at like all, dude. Thousand, twelve hundred, two hundred, five hundred, and we're like, all right, I guess that's what we owe, man. Sounds yeah. sounds legit. Yeah, dude, he'll just hit people with the random numbers all the time. Did anybody not go to the O line Vegas trip? We had a couple a couple dropouts. Unfortunately, who was uh, well, well, Tanny and Sun didn't come. Tanny and uh, Derek, Derek were at the Pro Bowl, so yeah, so they they, they weren't coming. Uh, KP, KP couldn't go. KP bailed. Other than that, we had a solid group. We was we were light. We had eight, eight and Dion. It's a solid crew, man. Do we had a solid crew? We had we had a solid old line crew because like it's kind of like an unspoken thing. Like when you leave a team, you get out of the group chat. Yeah, that and is, we've that had is like kind of like an unspoken rule. Yeah, huh? you kind of just like you play your time, and like you like the longest you should wait is probably like 
the beginning of the so new like season. See you later, boys. Yeah. Appreciate everything. Thanks for everything. That's what I'm Q did. So and so has left the group. <laughs> is that what Q did? <laughs> no, Q is still in the group. He's still in it. He's still in it. leaving you guys. He was like hyping us up going into the playoffs. Like you, you boys got this. Like all that shit. But it wasn't just Q, like Stinney, Aaron Stinney, who's at Tampa now, Corey, Corey. Levin, who was at Denver. In, in Denver, and then, uh, yeah. oh, then he went to Chicago. He was at Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. And then uh, Hirona Scross, too. Shout out, Corey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he just had a kid. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. They had a little boy. Dude, congrats. Congrats, Corey. He said cold balls and no no, uh, no doggy style that's either, cool. which apparently <laughs> is like trick. a, apparently that's the way to have a boy, is you got to keep your balls warm, and you got to go doggy style. But he he defied all odds. Fuck, man. Good for him. Good for, good him. for him. Good for him. Good for the boy. Happy baby. What. It's all good. Talon's pregnant right now. I've said that like four times already in this podcast. But like, Congrats, I want sir. a boy. Thank you. Thank Waylon. you. One of each. One of each. Waylon. Waylon. Waylon Danger Lawan. Yeah. Go. If I have a boy, if it's a Waylon boy, Danger if it's a girl, it's gonna be a Willow. As of right now, I could change at any point. Oh, girls, Willow. Yeah, girls, Willow. I'm rooting for a girl. You like Willow? Will. Willow's not Willow. Oh uh, shit! What do you mean? Oh shit! Like how did you not <laughs> put that together? Do, Willow. I gotta, gotta re-brainstorm that name. <laughs> oh fuck! God. But yeah, dude. But congrats, man. That's cool. Appreciate That's it. I'm news. stoked. I'm I'm fired up. It's gonna be a cool gig. Having two though, man. Yeah. It's a lot of work. You got it. No quesh. No quesh. No quesh, baby. <laughs> I th- I mean, my daughter now. She's a psycho, dude. She's awesome though. She's got my personality. 100 miles an hour until she goes to bed and then she falls asleep faster than anybody. The bean? The bean's rad. The bean is rad. Yo, we'll babysit the bean. We're kind of getting all over Babysat. I know. Babysat. Right after this, we're, gonna, we're diving in. It's all right. It's all right. But uh, yeah, we, uh, Charles and I, we babysat the bean for the first time. Taylor, yeah. God bless him. They allowed us to uh, watch over When was kid. this? When was this? Last, last week? Yeah, last, last week. week. Which it was like a been, last minute little date the, night. Yeah. Yeah. And they like joked. They said, uh, what if we haven't dropped Wynn off at Will's house? And I was like, do it. I was like, I'll, yeah. I'll crush it. Yeah. And I was trying to explain to them, you know, I took out like a, my say, I, I went full elevator pitch to him. Gotcha. Told him how I'd be great, this and that. And then Talon's like, is Charo going to be home? My fiance, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More importantly, yeah. And then uh, that's when we left. I was like, I'm sure she is. And I had to get out my phone and text. I was like, see, she's home. So she's like, oh, okay, we, we might trust you now. Yeah. We, we like got everything together real quick and boogied out of there. Any and issues? Clean, no. Clean sailing? No. We, we played fetch. <laughs> Dude. We did. <laughs> yeah, he sent us a video. Will had this ball and he'd throw it across the hallway and Wynn would chase after it and come back with it in her mouth. Yeah. And drop it. Hey, and drop it right <laughs> my kid, loves my, animals, my kid dude. rules, dude. Oh, that's awesome. Kids are awesome. But yeah, they had a nice little date night. That's they got man. a little date night. Boy yeah. came in clutch for him. Good man. Yeah, it was a solid gig. Good she was man. not stoked to go to Will's house on the way there. On the way back, though, she was like, Will's house? Will's house? It's like, no, yeah. mom and dad is house some now. Blues Clues. That, she's like a good. house too dude she's like her old daddy i was like hey hey puffs g- give me the puffs back like you don't <laughs> no, need more just puffs. a little just strong eat, baby eat yeah. everything yeah. Yeah. she's tall she's like a tall, as tall as like some four-year-olds i bet little freak love her yeah. that's awesome man but i, I kind of like how she's different she's awesome she had this such curly hair too dude, you're gonna be in for it with two i know i'm still like honestly like you have you have the energy for it you have the energy yeah. for like a bunch of kids dude i like I, like part of <laughs> part of me wants like 10 kids and the other part of me is like damn like too solid i could go either way honestly yeah. 10 and 2 those are the two that's pretty extreme it's like right? you know like yeah. 10 kids but hey too solid too yeah. solid like in the middle because you think like, like dude when kids are young they're handfuls but like you gotta think like when they're 15 18 20 whatever like they're all coming home for christmas yeah. having a blast it's cool it's cool I, my mom's one of eight yeah my dad's one of three and everybody still lives in san diego so like growing up huge family no matter what happened you know first holy communion championship like the stands were packed all, all of our family was there that's right it, it was really cool growing up in a in like a huge family like that i got I, that would be really cool i literally had like my immediate family and then that was kind of it really yeah like i had like my grandparents but we really talked to them had some weird cousins up in california shout outs to the weird cousins no free shout outs <laughs> but like, i don't really talk to them like i stopped like <laughs> talking to them when i was like 11 yeah. I don't know anybody. Yeah. I don't know anybody in my immediate family, really. So I think it'd be cool because uh, Taylor's got a big family. So that'd be cool yeah. to like, have everybody around. It is. Christmases, holidays, all that stuff. Yeah. It was, always, it was always a party, like no matter what happened. You know what I mean? It was like we had. I everybody love that. was we tight had, too. Every, everybody was everybody, tight. Everybody was tight. Cousins. Competitive. Aunts, uncles. Uh, my, me and my brothers were competitive. Everybody else was just kind of kind of stoked to be around. That California Happy lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Do they all live cool. in Encinitas? 
No, but all over San Diego, Mich- Mission Beach, Claremont. Very cool. Maybe, yeah. That's awesome. And would you would you went to San San Jose State? Uh, San Jose State, yeah. San Jose State Spartans. Jesus Spartans. So you Was went it, there. Did you go on scholarship? I walked on. Yeah, when I got there. No way. Yeah, yeah. So you walked on. You were feeling. I walked it. on. I was like a two hundred and thirty pound walk on, like tight end. And really? Like, yeah. And told me one day, he's like, "You're gonna be a tackle for us. You're way too slow, buddy." And I'm like, "No shit." All right, man. So I just. Were you psyched to be an offensive player though? Not not alignment, but I'm saying, did that kind of shatter your dreams? Like, damn, I kind of want to play tight end and catch the football. Uh, you snipped that one of the air. I didn't. Bolts. I didn't. Yeah, I know, right? I should have should have stuck with it. You should have stuck no, with it. No, I, I just I didn't give a shit, man. I wanted to play, like no matter what. Like, and coach is like, hey, why don't you be a tackle? I'm like, let's charge it. Just whatever you could do. Yeah, whatever I could do. I mean, I was a walk on. What am I? Oh, man. Were you gonna say no? And then coach is talking to me, knows my name, wants me to do something. Like I'm in. You know, yeah. like let's yeah. do it. All right, and I, I charged it. So you got drafted to the Houston Texans after that. When, so you yeah. were, you graduated. You went to high school in 2008. Yeah, I graduated. I went a year before. Yeah, so you. and then you graduated oh, so 13. You're my year. Yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. You graduated 13. Got drafted by the Texans. Yeah. What round? 176 overall. 176. What round is that? Six round. Six round. It's better than you. It is better. It's better than me. <laughs> 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 you tapped me. Nah. Like, what's he tapped me. Hey, hey, what's 176 <laughs> overall? Like you're like. What is that? Like what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. I remember that number like. So yeah, clearly, dude, you, you always I mean? remember the number you're drafted yeah. in or not yeah. drafted in. Was there when, when did you when did you realize you had a shot to play in the NFL? If you were a two thirty pound I was a starter, on. yeah. Well, when I started, like a couple years later, yeah, you're like I started. This is it. I was playing good, yeah. I put on like seventy pounds, just crushed the weight room, and so you were so three, you were three hundred pounds as a senior, just destroying yeah. the weight room. Yeah, basically, yeah. Three year starter, got drafted Texans, and I got down there, and they're like, all right, man, you're. You're pretty solid. You're pretty good. And they were stoked on me, man. I was playing really? good. Yeah. Yeah. I remember made the team, did all that going into Chargers week. My whole family was there. Everybody had bought all the tickets. Before the practice, like Kubiak calls me in. Hey, man, get ready to go. You know, 10, 12 snaps, whatever. And what week is this? Chargers. It was week one. Week one. Okay. So yeah, 10, 12. Oh, because they, at the, at the Houston, they would cycle in and out dudes, right? Yeah. Well, I was young. You know, Wade Smith was, was coming off of like a, like an injury. Mm-hmm. You're like you're ready to go. Wade Smith was a tackle. In front he was of you. a guard. He was a guard in front of me. Yeah, I, I came down. They moved me to guard. Okay, you know, I, okay I was playing okay. good. I was with Ben. We were rotating a little bit in the preseason, and uh, I'm like, oh, this is this is for real. Like, like it's about to go down. I'm telling my family, like, hey, get your tickets. Everybody bought their tickets. Plan. Boom. I go out to practice. My foot gets stepped on. Break my foot. Boom. IR for the rest of the year. I was like. No oh way. No, way. no way! Jones fracture, no whatever. Way. Fifth metatarsal. Yeah, fifth metatarsal. What was that? The, that's this. That's the little that's outside. outside. I, I broke that too. My. Yeah. Uh, Those are super easy to break, aren't they? Uh, easy to yeah. break. Kind of easy to fix. Like it wasn't like a crazy. Yeah, it's not a career. Yeah, it's like, it's like, like, yeah nine whatever. weeks, right? Yeah, like I could have. They could have. I could have come back, but they're like, dude, you're a rookie. Boom, IR. I'm like, all right, well. Damn, that, yeah, that goes sucks, the rookie dude. year. Yeah, that's still cool of like Houston to do that though, because usually like get back as soon as you can. Whatever, like, yeah, they. Yeah. This is kind of yeah. how the NFL is. Like, if you're and not, you're, a you're not guy. playing, you're not worth it to us. Yeah. And they're like, hey, t- hey, take the season, do what you gotta do, which is, I'm sure, a godsend. Like, long, like long term is good for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I would always like to come back. And- yeah. Went and played. Yeah, play. that foot shit hurts, huh? That sucks. Yeah, well, that's- I didn't mind. It was literally in a jog through. And I broke on this stick round. Literally, I thought someone took a shotgun to my foot, dude. It was that I bad? I just started limping around. Yeah, because I just, I didn't do it. I just did it kind of like mechanically. I, no one stepped on me or anything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? And I tried like taping it up and going back. And obviously, you just started yeah. limping. Like, you're like, something's wrong. And this is the you day before. It and this is two like, days before we play on Saturday. And then, uh, so I'm out for mm-hmm. like nine weeks. And that's when Levante David started. He was brand new. He's a Juco guy. That's when he started his first game. He had like 13 tackles in the first game, and I was kind of like, oh, shit. Damn. Yeah. And then when I came back, it's kind of like, hey, we're happy to have you back. <laughs> but, you, you know, not your job's there. not there anymore. The job's gone. Levante got, Davis. Levante he took your Davis. job? Oh, yeah. Jesus. We we ran like a one. We ran. We played dime most of the time. We ran one linebacker. So we would actually have a DB come in because the spread stuff. Yeah. Big 12. So Levante was our lone backer, dude. And that's when the legend of Levante fucking. And so everybody's like, oh, this dude is legit. And then he yeah. came the next year. That's when you guys saw him. He legit um, had like 27 tackles. We talked yeah, about this yeah, all the time. He's a monster. 
27 tackles in the Nebraska Michigan game. <clears throat> yeah, but Max, that's what you gotta do, man. That's what happened, dude. Blew my foot, and it just it, like you just it's like, an easy fuck. break. Oh no, hit your head. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> right? Seeing stars here, bro. And that's week one that this that's happened. That's week one, dude. Dude, my family had already bought tickets. Oh. They were all like, this tailgate was set up, and like, man, just. Did you feel confident shit making the team when you first started training camp? I had a good feeling. You know, I just kind of kind of moved I, you up in the charts. And yeah, was yeah. You, and you know, you can kind of tell when things are going good and yeah. mm, when things are kind of going bad. I, I felt like I was getting more reps. I was I was playing well, and shit happens. You know, Jesus, it's a bummer. So then, boom, rookie year done. We it was a rough year, rough year in, in Houston that year. We like won the first two and then lost the rest of them. Yeah, Kubiak got fired. Yeah, two years are two and fourteen. Yeah, been a part Fuck. of those seasons. Yeah, those are the, the worst. Rough, Andrew on IR, one. so you kind of don't know what was going on. Like, I've never been a part of it. This, yeah, this sucks. And then, boom, year done. We we lost them all. Kubiak gets fired. Bill O'Brien comes in. I'm like, well, this is year two coming off IR. Got a lot to prove. And mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> show up to the workouts. Everything's going good. There have been some roster guys. Bill calls me into his office. He's like, dude, we we really like. We really like you. We really like like what you do. We saw what you did in the preseason. You know, we we expect big things out of you. Mm -hmm. Who's the OC? Like, Hell yeah, he was. Bill was the OC. Yeah, Bill was the OC. Okay, he, you know he was run, running the show on offense. I yeah. still think he he does a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> then in the middle of like workouts and coming into OTAs, where I started feeling like something was up you know and this I guess is year I, two this is you're going to year two yeah coming off coming off ir whatever it is for yeah five months later, 2014. You know I mean? six, six months later and uh dude i just started feeling like tired and like what the, what the fuck is going on man like i wasn't hitting my numbers that i'm usually at like in that process like when you start jumping up yeah and uh i'm like man something's odd and then i got like started getting like a cough and i couldn't figure out what the hell was going on i were you like, like super, were you super alarmed or was it kind of like no, I a nagging like, kind of deal? Oh uh, man, I'm coming off IR. Like I hadn't played football in a while. I hadn't, you know, put in work like this on the field doing all this stuff. It yeah. must just be like fatigued, like yeah. getting back into the swing of things. This is fine. And then I got the cough that wouldn't go away. I was like, man, this is, this is weird. Something's like it's off. not something, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I was super, I never felt like this before, mm -hmm. like tired, coughing. And then I started getting night sweats. And they were like really like bad night sweats. Like the whole like my sheets would be completely soaked. Really, I'm like, this is something something's weird. But I just kept kind of like grinding through. Right. Went on for for a few weeks, and then finally we we're out at, in OTAs. <clears throat> and I was like, man, it was right, right after Ben Jones's wedding. Mm -hmm. I came back, so I'm like, man, I hung over. What, what's the deal? And I couldn't breathe, man. I had a terrible cough. You the know, cough just slowly got worse. Slowly got worse. Like it just felt like it was there was fluid or something in there. Like I knew something was off. That deep and light bronchitis. Like, cough. Yeah, like you were coughing really deep, but nothing was coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, this that's this is weird. Like there's like nothing I ever ever felt before. And I basically pass out out there. The trainer's like, what the fuck is going on with you like so you're, you're, going out, you're, to see, you're out in the field and out you in the pass field out. in houston in the heat doing all this stuff yeah. like, in, OTAs? Like, like, in otas and the trainer's like yeah something's up we're, we're gonna send you to the team doctor and you and you just passed out in the field legit, no like legit I, no, passed out. no i didn't pass out but I, I felt like i was going to yeah you're lightheaded you're getting yeah, lightheaded you're, you're seeing the lights and everything i was like man this is this is brutal like mm -hmm. something is up and the trainer agreed and so i went to see dr Munts, who's a team doctor and uh he took a listen to my my chest and he's like you need to go to the emergency room right now get an x-ray i'm like this is weird he's like don't how panic. do you say it was it like an like a, an alarming no he's like hey this is this is uh can be one of a few things it can be like a an infection on your lungs it can be you know bronchitis it can be like all he, he kind of listed a, a bunch of things he didn't say he didn't say cancer but mm -hmm. you know i think he knew kind of instantly he's like you need to go down to the emergency room right now and get an x-ray and so like all right, that's weird got an x-ray packed my stuff up like i was gonna leave and then another doctor comes in he's like hey you you can't leave right now you need to go to the emergency room we have to run a couple of other tests i'm like all right so like, what the hell is going on yeah for at this real? point you're starting to get like stressed, yeah, like, I'm starting to get stressed out and then <clears throat> x-ray led to uh mri which led to 
uh, PET scan, which led to a, a pet. <clears throat> what's a PET scan? It basically scans your body for cancer, basically mm -hmm. like cancer cells, and then eventually a uh, a biopsy and eventually a diagnosis. So, were you wondering before you're doing this stuff, you're like, do I have cancer? No, that didn't cross my mind. None until, of that crossed your mind at all. You're just no. kind of listening to them, wondering like, what the fuck's going yeah, on? Yeah, I thought it was like an infection or something. I'm like, of course, man, I'm 23 years old. Like, I'm, you know, I'm what, like, I'm pro athlete. Like, this don't happen. Right. This yeah. don't happen to us. And uh, so that was the last thing that crossed my mind until they said what a PET scan was. And then I was like, shit, putting stuff together. Yeah. I'm, like, a lot, none, none of it adds up. Shit, it might, it might be yeah this, you know mm -hmm. and uh Fuck. eventually i did get diagnosed uh with non-hodgkin's t-cell lymphoblastic lymphoma and how uh, long how long between that scan all those tests was this days at a time no that was that was, that was all hours that was all that night it was all one day yeah all one day so you go from having a cough you're you're at practice have a cough tell the trainer listen i'm, I'm fucked up i feel like i'm gonna throw up i feel like oh. i'm gonna pass out the next day I get and he checks your lungs x-ray and he says MRI, get out of here go see the doctor doctor says go to the emergency the next room morning diagnosis in the no way who was your first phone call oh to my parents right when you got out right when you left the building you weren't with your wife no, at the time yet no i wasn't with my wife I, I don't think i called anybody for 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 a while after so, you but hold on, go, go back go back real quick so you do all these tests are done you're yeah. sitting in this waiting room i'm assuming yeah uh, you're laying down on this bed, and the doctor comes in with um, like an intern or something like that. No, there was like ten doctors. Ten doctors. In. Yeah. Fuck. And they like walk into the room, and what do they say to you? Doctors. Like, well, how, like, how do they? Yeah. Tell you that everything's different now. They're like, hey, we we have the results. They were basically they were very very black and white. They weren't like easing into it. Like, we got really? the results. Our diagnosis is you you have non Hodgkin's T cell lymphoblastic lymphoma. It's a very rare and a very aggressive form of cancer um our suggestions that you start chemotherapy treatments immediately what's your reaction and i had kind of like gathered like this was a this was a pretty good possibility so, so you weren't so you were i was still i was still like no fucking way like mm. it had fully kind of really hit you for yeah real. i was like no fucking way this is happening to me like no like no way you know whatever i like, ate good you know, went out and drank a little bit, and but didn't like. I wasn't doing anything crazy, you know. I didn't like yeah. smoke a pack of cigarettes a day or nothing. Like all the things that you like grow up. Like, yeah, oh, you're living a regular twenty three year old's life, a professional athlete's life. You know what I mean? I ate, mm -hmm. ate well and did all that. And I'm like, oh, no way. And uh, they said that I think I just sat there for a while and thought. I'm like, man, I was just at practice, you know. Now, what time is it during the day? Yeah, this is in the afternoon. So it was late, late uh, afternoon, like it's a dark outside. So I got the test in the morning. No, it was, it was like in the summer. So, damn. So then yeah. you, you diet. You're just trying to digest it all. And then I'm you trying guys to digest it all, and then and then the and then Cap comes back in person because he got, he got the news from Doctor Munz, who was over there, and he came back in person. Who 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 who's Cap? Cap is a trainer for the Texans. Okay. Yeah. So Cap came back, and you're like, so sorry, like. Is that when it started to hit you? And that's when it started to hit me. Like, this is the head trainer for the Houston Texans telling me, like, you sorry that I got diagnosed with cancer. Like, that's super heavy. He's like, have yeah. you told anybody? It was pretty emotional. Like, no, yeah. Like, no, I haven't. Fuck. He's like, all right, let's call your parents. And I call my parents. And were you able to tell them? Were you able to get it out? <clears throat> it was. It was pretty. I was pretty emotional. Yeah, telling my parents that because they were on a vacation in europe and <clears throat> it was it, it, that's a tough convert that's a tough conversation because you know like you're about to cause them pain you know what yeah. I mean? like you know like you're gonna drop something super heavy and emotional on them and you know you almost feel like guilty a little bit like man this this is gonna this is gonna really mess them up and mm -hmm. gonna be really hard on my family and uh that's a really selfless mindset to have like a lot of people would sit there and be like man poor me poor this poor that but it does, like when something like that happens to yeah. people it's not just one person that's affected it's everybody that they love yeah yeah and yeah. so so i, I told mean, them and next thing you know i was going across the street to md anderson to uh 
start start chemotherapy man as a as a cancer patient over there no shit yeah. and this is still during the spring summertime this is the next day next day i mean no that that afternoon right after they told me so you okay so you're i'm just recapping everything because this is like it's a lot like this is less than 24 hours Fuck. so you go yeah maybe 36 hours it, it, was, it was quick man it was yeah. really quick so you go you're at practice now, in the first morning, i went to the sperm bank and and um did it because they said there's like a low chance that it could affect your fertility so i went to the sperm bank in houston and did that first and then spanked it you spanked it <laughs> spanked it, it on spanked it real quick how okay just to, you know hedge your bet if anything yeah, goes no down quite. you know <laughs> no just want to be want to be for sure you're and, like hey uh, you're like hey can i get a hand i'm kind of in a low spot i got right a situation now. i don't know if i can do this i got on my a situation own. right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really hard for was, me to get uh, this thing up <laughs> That was, definitely, that was shit. definitely super emotional. Hey, hey, people I'm still like, use is... magazines. You pop out. People still <laughs> use did. magazines. They had magazines. They're like, is, do you want any of this material? And they had like a whole like category, like whole freaking they didn't even catalog have, for you to they pick didn't even from. They have VHS. They had nothing. <laughs> no. You just take out your phone like, oh, I'm good. Man. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> What's the Wi-Fi password? Let me get out of this thing. Yeah. That was an that was, uh, experience. And then after that, it was back to MD Anderson to fucking start chemo. Jesus. Yeah, it was... It was pretty gnarly, but I got over to MD Anderson, and I MD Anderson is one of the, like the top the top cancer hospitals in the in the country. And uh, <clears throat> I got over there, and they're like, "This is this is really serious. This is a very rare." And I meet with my oncologist, and he's like, "You know, I, I've dealt with this before, but it's very rare and very aggressive. The thing about that is we have a." trial chemotherapy that has been getting really good results and it's not available you know anywhere else anywhere else it's available right here we we developed it and we're getting really good results and i'm sitting there thinking i'm like man that's that's really weird uh that that's here you know yeah. what i mean like yeah like, like, anywhere, the anywhere in the world like i'm in houston yeah and and they have a they have a trial chemo for me and of course i'm like yeah you know what like i'm all in on this like let's everything i can like i'm putting all my trust into you guys mm -hmm. you guys you guys are the best. Like we're we're gonna fight this thing with everything I got. Yeah. And uh, and then the next day, I'm still processing it. I'm still, you know, everybody had come to kind of kind of see me. Ben Jones came. It was like mm -hmm. that first night. It was Ben and <clears throat> JJ and uh, Cody, and everybody came in and we kind of like had a meal. We didn't like even really talk that much. We just kind of. Sat, sat there and, and ate yeah sat and ate and just you know tried to be tried to be guys like just hanging out you know shooting the right, shit but yeah. everyone was like man this is kind of living with that i don't know what to, i don't know what to say like mm -hmm. i'm gonna be fine like i don't know like maybe i won't be or and they're like hey man we're, we feel for you but we don't know how to you know it was like a real awkward thing but everybody everybody had come by and said it and then a couple of days into it actually the owner of the texans bob mcnair came in because I didn't know this, but he was getting cancer treatment there too as well. And and no one knew? Was this like a secret thing? It, in, in the beginning it was, it was, it was secret. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then he kind of came out publicly and, and said, hey, I am fighting it. Uh, and so he comes into the room and he's like, hey, Quiz. Everybody called me Quiz in Houston, kind of like. Yeah. Here in Nashville, he goes, hey, Quiz. I'm really sorry to hear about your diagnosis. I'm really sorry to hear about all this. Uh, I've been praying on this a lot and the Texans are gonna they're gonna back you through this fight, man. As long as it takes, whatever it takes. You know, we you have our support. You're gonna beat this thing and you're gonna come back and you're gonna you're gonna play for us in, in that Texan uniform and I can't wait to see it. And I was just like Oh my god, like this guy knows my name, like it's the owner yeah, of the team. Yeah, like yeah. I was a six round draft pick on IR the year before, like and now he's saying, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I couldn't, wild, I couldn't oh, man, hardly awesome. believe it. And so, um, you know, may, may God rest his soul. He passed away last last season, obviously. But you know that that was one of the one of the beautiful moments, like me coming back and playing for the Texans um, in 2017. He got to see those those two games, and uh, very cool. That is yeah, cool, he came man. up to me and he's like. Lots of prayers answered today, man. This was this is what we were going for. That was a special moment to be able to share that, mm -hmm. share that with him, and uh, kind of like have those things come true. You know, prayer, prayers prayers come true. That that's a special that's a special thing. No doubt. That's a that's got to be an unbelievable experience. And so you were 
Drafted in 13, diagnosed in 14. So you went through that for three years. Went through that for three years. And then came back and- You went through chemo and all that for three for years. Three years, yeah. What now, what I, is- I went like, through like an intensive part of chemo for about 10, 11 months, like super intensive. Every 21 days I'd go in and I'd stay for a week in the hospital. And then they would just dose you with like 24 hour doses of chemo, all that. And then I did radiation for like five, six weeks after that. And then I went on like a maintenance chemo for the next two years basically, which mm -hmm. was- I would take daily chemo, weekly chemo, and then monthly I'd go in and get infusion. This is, this is a super like, ignorant question, but like, what is like, what is, I know chemo, like what, like how do you, do you just get an IV? You take yeah. it by pill? Like you, what? You can do either. What does it feel like when you take it? Do you actually, do you feel awful? <clears throat> yeah, you feel terrible, man. Like super bad. Really? Like the intensive chemo, like what's, what's going on during this intense, when you're like, I'm in there for like a week or the, like the worst parts. Dude, they had this, <clears throat> one chemo they call it the red devil it was doxorubicin it was like the last for like the last 28 hours of your stay there you, you just get this red chemo that freaking pumps for 24 hours all night this IV all day. that pumps IV and it really like turns your pee re uh, red and your poop it's called the red, red. devil that's the that's the what's it name feel the like hospital. as it is there a really? feeling the entire time it's dripping um Yes and no. I mean, like, after my first round of chemo, I was like, oh, man, this, this, uh, this ain't that bad. Like, I'm not gonna freaking whip this thing. Yeah, but you're then, like, savage. every one you go, uh, it gets harder and harder because your body kind of gets wear down. Like, chemo is like, we're gonna kill, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna kill as many cancer cells as possible. But along and, that comes but with along the way, is gonna do this. And then as soon as your body recovers, all your... <clears throat> your white blood cells and your red blood cells and your platelets like as soon as they come back to a number then they hit you again so it's like a constant battle to mm -hmm. get as much chemo in as possible and keep your body get your body back to a healthy yeah a healthy place and like that's kind of the race that they do to kill all the cancer cells and then keep you it's essentially poison so you know you're just trying to poison and kill those cells off and maintain Wow. The body being alive wow wow wow. and uh so it pro progressively got worse uh, as we went it went harder like after the first round and then you lose your hair and then after that now you have to start getting platelet transfusions and red blood cell transfusions and uh yeah it was really gnarly man i was basically going to md anderson every day for like 10 months because in between in between rounds you got to go back and you got to get certain certain shots to help your immune system or infusions help your red blood cells or your platelets and mm -hmm. there's just always something you take a million pills every day twice a day and it's it's brutal Fuck. it was a lot thankfully my my uh my mom she came down, down to houston and she kind of moved in with me during that time and i did some time back back in san diego and that's actually where uh me and megan got to spend spend a lot of time too mm -hmm. she was working for the chargers at the time and when you're going through your stuff in the hospital, like you can't sleep because they're coming in there and they're poking you or taking your pulse or right. everything's beeping. You know what I mean? It's just terrible. Yeah. So I told her that and she was working for the chargers. And so she would get up super early and just come hang out of the hospital with me while I was going through it. And we would just be talking super early in the morning before she had to get there. And <clears throat> because before I had got di gotten diagnosed that off season, we had we had started hung out a little bit and talk a little more. That's kind of where we got rekindled. And then I went through all this stuff and I went home to UCSD to do that round. And that's when she started coming in the morning. And for like, I don't know, something brought me back home to do this. I'm not in Houston right now doing it. You're working for the Chargers. We're <clears throat> spending this time as I'm going through. Uh, I'm going through. You know the hardest thing in my life and you're kind of one of the bright spots of this whole process i get to hang out with you and it make my day better and we just started talking more and more and she was she was definitely an, an angel through the whole thing and no doubt you know it's, it's one of those things like everything happens for a reason i was in houston with mr mcnair and i'm from san diego and where she is dude it's got to just be like a thank you <clears throat> crazy situation and like it definitely it shows in your day-to-day -day, like who you are as a person like the energy your energy and from a day-to-day -day basis like you're always positive there's never there's never a negative outlook that i've seen from you <clears throat> but it's also like hearing I'm, I'm we've been teammates for what 18 months 
Yeah. And I've uh, this is the first yeah. time I've heard this story, and it's kind of like, shit. How do you ask somebody about this kind of experience? Yeah, I don't make it. I don't make it a point to like, yeah, tell it to everybody. You know right. what I mean? But right. hey, but hey, we, we want to come on and talk about it. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the true story. I'm gonna tell you because it's not just a simple thing. Mm-hmm. It's super complicated, and there's so many people that were helping me along the way that I'm, I'm gonna if I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna tell it. Yeah, tell the whole. I'm gonna thing. tell. I gotta tell the whole thing. You know what yeah. I mean? I gotta talk about me meeting my wife in the middle of the hardest thing i've ever done or mr mcnair who just had my back the whole way or like being in houston where it had this clinical trial you know i mean there's too many things that that i think are kind of blessings along the way to believe that hey everything happens for a reason Mm -hmm. and like i'm still in it man i'm still i'm still doing my thing no question i'm still doing my thing so that was a uh that was important for me to to have Megan during that whole thing. Yeah. You know? What a bond you two must have. Like, yeah. I'm sure you guys hung out a couple times and then you call her and you're like, fuck, man, I got cancer. And she's probably like, holy shit. Like, what yeah. a situation. I you mean, guys knew each other since middle school, though. Yeah. So she was so probably we right there right close, away. And we knew there was something. We knew there was already something there before this happened. And yeah. It just kind of makes you realize, like, dude, I'm, I'm not here to waste any time. Like, I'm. I'm I'm here to live and I'm gonna get as much as I can out this life every day and be intentional. I'm, I'm gonna marry I'm gonna marry this woman. Mm-hmm. Like, let's get married and when did you propose to her? Thing. After I finished all my treatments. Yeah. It was like that next month or whatever. Really? Yeah. And the Texans paid for all your treatments and, and paid you? Uh, and every- it was I was on the NFI list. Yeah. And uh What is NFI for people that listen? Non football yeah. illness list. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't really um, on the roster or anything. They kind of—it's kind of like a list where they can kind of do whatever they want. They can choose to pay you, choose to not pay you, and they did. And I had the health insurance from from when I was active, and they did. They they helped me navigate that whole that whole process of insurance and, and NFI, and, and and it was good. They were they were good to me, man. I, I they always have a special place, you know, just because. That is Mr. McNair is such a stud. He's just a good, what a good top-notch Texan, organization. Man. Yeah, what, what a top-notch what was, organization. What would you recall? It was the hardest or lowest moment during that entire process. I mean, I'm sure Dude, there's honestly, several. But was the there hardest thing? The hardest doubted? thing about it was like mentally, because like by the end, by the end of that intensive treatment, you're looking in the mirror and you don't even recognize the person in the mirror. Really, no hair. I had lost like. 50 pounds like and you you, are you feeling feeble and weak and stuff like that like you're feeling like the worst hangover of your life like every day like food tastes like tinfoil like you barely got energy to get out of bed some days like it's it's it is it it, it was miserable and uh you know you hardly recognize that person in, in the mirror and you start to think you're like man am i ever gonna come back and play football again like mm-hmm. am i how the hell am I going to get back to where I was? Because they put a pick line in you. That's how they do it. They, they don't stick you with an IV every time because it's insane. You're getting IVs all the time. So they put a pick line, which is like a permanent IV. And uh, that goes straight to a big artery in your heart. So, so that can handle the chemo because these little veins, the mm. chemo will just burn them up. It's so like potent. And so you have a pick line. But during, and when you have the pick line in, you can't lift heavy weights for the whole time. Like, like lifting weights with the other with the other arms trying to do it but you don't want to pop the pick line out of place because you got to go put another one in and just mm-hmm. avoid the avoid the hospital at all costs and you know you're feeling weak feeling hungover feeling like a cancer patient and you're like looking at myself in the mirror I'm like i don't know how the hell i'm going to get back to playing and that was a really hard part for me because that's all that's all I'd ever want to do, you know, is is is, is play ball and I feel like it was getting ripped from me and there was nothing I could do about it. Yeah. And so that was hard to kind of process and then just going through the whole thing, being like, I don't know what's on the other side of this. I don't know you know? Yeah. Twenty twenty three, twenty four, like figuring it out, you know, figuring out what the what the heck's going on and now I got cancer and fighting for my life right now, like it was it, that was that was tough to tough to go through. Thankfully, I was surrounded by just studs, you know, yeah. teammates and how many times you want to quit? Did you feel like, man, if I could just quit, the, like I just want to fucking? No, nah, I don't think I ever felt like I wanted to quit. Like, 
of course I wanted to like not do it anymore, but I didn't want to like finish early or not, not finish my, finish the treatments that they had planned for me because they kind of have a plan they they have it mapped out for you they mm. tweak it along the way but you can kind of tell when you're gonna print. be yeah blueberry you're gonna get this so there's like so i was, you... I was gonna finish it no matter what and then see what happened after that but it was not fun going in there every day and yeah dealing with all that when you did when you did the chemo how long would the like f- that feeling you were talking about feeling so bad how long would that last until you did the next chemo it, it would get worse and worse every time like really? you don't get stronger the more chemo. But it you wasn't do. You know like, I mean? like it wasn't like there. you would do the whatever pick line thing. Yeah. And that would last for an hour and then you'd be like, Well, like, I kinda of feel better now. It wouldn't be anything like that. It'd be like a constant like just I no, feel like yeah, shit. Yeah, I'd be constantly feeling feeling bad. Man. Yeah, it was brutal, man. It was really brutal. But... That's that that'd be so hard. That's be such a hard thing to process in your head. Yeah. Cause you like dark, dark, as dark nights, players, you know, because you can't you can't ever sleep. You just feel terrible. You gotta get up, you're gonna puke or diarrhea or like something doesn't go right you know mm-hmm. and you're not sleeping you're feeling terrible it's just God. it sucks man it really it just sucked it had to be hard for your mom and your oh, no gr- wife yeah, to see you in yeah. that position no question yeah. or people coming around there they want to give you something you can want to help you but... can probably just sense like yo don't don't fucking don't feel sorry for me yeah that, that was another thing too was it was a very private thing that you're going through but it was very public in in houston yeah you know, people in Houston, they do know my story. And I think it's important that people in Nashville do too. And that's why I'm like, you asked me to come on. I'm like, oh, yeah, stoked, man. I've, I've been, boys, a- I've been anxious to hear your story for a while. But like, <clears throat> I mean, the, the breaks that Keith give us, the yeah, <laughs> they're 52 uh, minute breaks, it t- you know it takes, what I'm saying? It takes a little longer, <laughs> man. It's just, it's tough. It's t- and it's tough, like when it's a traumatic experience, like how, how do you go and talk to somebody about that and like, yeah, I'm not I don't gonna know, lead man. with it or bring it up in a type of conversation. But yeah, like we take a taxi to the bar. So, so cute. <laughs> cancer, oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> like, how, what do you know? You're yeah. getting, hey, you're getting coffee during yeah. a break. Like, yeah. Hey, it's like cancer deal. That was pretty. Uh, I mean, we've we I, everybody's mentioned crazy. it and talked about it in the locker yeah. room, and it's like, I mean, Vrabel. We talked about this in the, in the weight room one time. I was like, you don't really like people talking about it because I, like Vrabel or somebody said something, and you could I could feel you were like, yeah, I appreciate it, like. But I feel like there's a part of you that's like, I'm done with that piece of my life. Like, I just want to be a football player. Like, I want to go yeah. back and like have it's a things weird, be It's normal. a weird dynamic to to try to balance because it is like a respect thing when somebody does. And I do appreciate it. Like, man, yeah. this, guy, this guy beat cancer and he's still here. And I'm like, yeah, I appreciate that. But it's also like not the first thing I want people to think about when when they talk about me or yeah. what I do. And so it's like a, it's a weird thing to, you know, try to navigate. But, it, you know, whenever Rabel does it, I'm, I'm not like a embarrassed or anything but no yeah that, but, that's, but then that's not what i meant but it's when it's a focus apart from like other good things i'm doing then i'm like okay like i appreciate it but also like kicking ass over here so like let's yeah let's, yeah. let's, let's talk ball let's yeah, do yeah, let, like let, I'm a savage. but yeah i'm not, I'm not trying yeah. to always always talk it but 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 if i'm gonna talk it then i'm gonna do it right yeah no doubt dude well that i mean yeah i mean you the, went, you went situation. through that you you come back and play what was the emotion like when you put the jersey on to actually play again? How much? Well, oh, first dude, before sick. that, like, how much did you weigh? You finished all your treatments, everything. Yeah. How much? What, what were you looking like? What was your feeling like? Like, what was like your mental dude, psyche, physical? Do you have a photo? I don't even know. I, I could probably figure it out, but dude, terrible. Just imagine taking like ten months off and getting poisoned the whole time. And yeah. then you're still on chemo trying to like come back and hair. work out. Like it, it was brutal, man. It was totally. it was so it was so tough, but you know, there's no shortcuts. You just gotta grind away. And the further away from it I get, like the better I feel. Like the more energy I feel, the more I can the more I can think, the more I can you know, it, it it's it's cool to like I don't feel like I'm still recovering, but I feel like I'm still getting healthier which is which progressing fires me up. yeah you know yeah. what i mean like dude, it was so traumatic and it was so long like as an athlete like you can feel little little changes in your body like yeah for better or worse and like i do feel like i'm still getting better from 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 my treatments from those three years of chemo man. you see me man i'm out there every day just dude full of energy no way no yeah and i'm just like dude there's only one way to get it get it back and that's just just grind do you feel do, do you feel like day. you do you feel it. back to normal 100 percent now yeah I, I feel i feel 100 percent great now 
yeah. but I do feel like the further away from I get, like the better, the better. So like next year's even better. The year if that's gonna yeah, be better. yeah, you're you're hundred percent. My hundred percent is growing. Like I feel yeah. like yeah, I'm back. Like I can. And you you said this to me when we were in I think it was Baltimore because we were talking about NAD. Yeah, do NAD and IVs, and you're like, I don't really mess with what I put in my body like that. Even like, I, I just NAD is like not proven, but it's like one of the things they use to like that, kill coming. cancer cells. Yeah, it's, it's like coming. a. It's yeah. like the next wave of anti aging oh, type cause, stuff. Cause you guys were you guys were all on the NAD train, so I'm like, oh, let's see what it is. But I'm always super hesitant to like put things in your body. Anything, any, anything. Yeah. I don't know why. I just, I mean, I do know why, but, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I just don't. I just don't. I just don't like to mess with it because I don't know. Does yeah. it feel like uh, like are you hesitant to put like fast food in your body or like pizza or like shit like that? I, I mean, mean, we I crush a pizza it. in I mean, Vegas. I, I don't think that's because I'm a cancer artist, just because I don't like to eat like shit yeah because i'm an athlete you know mm, fair enough you know but uh we did crush some pizza in vegas that was pretty good we slayed some pizza, you gotta crush some pizza sometimes you gotta you just gotta eat some pizza Dude, the boys yeah. got after it i tell you what we went to in and out burger and you got that uh what were those fries animal style Light animal well. style but like I, I knew that but you said medium well lightly well medium get well, well done medium fries. well so like they're extra crispy oh. when you eat them because they get a little soggy with yeah, the sauce sure. and stuff that down. Sauce. what's that this video what's this video right here I'm trying to load it up. The Wi-Fi is not cooperating, but it's uh, it's David ringing the bell after he finished his treatments. Yeah, so that was that was oh, three years right after I three years after I got uh, diagnosed. That was after all the. And if it'll play, he rings the shit out of it. <laughs> rings the shit out of it. Look at him eyeing it up, sizing it up. Someone talking to you? What are they saying? No, you read the. You kind of read the. Uh, and everybody's trying to FaceTime my brothers and stuff. You're just like, let me ring this damn bell, dude. Like, I'm, I'm done with this place. Oh, oh I like off that of the wall. shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That's that, awesome. That was a big day. Everybody, everybody flew down for that. I mean, hell, dude, that is. I think my thing. Yeah, I wasn't out. used to NFL linemen. So you, so you finished, you finished treatment. Yeah, my, you get engaged. Yeah, boom. You're boom, married we're back now. Into, we're back in the. We're back doing it. We're back in OTAs and all that in that uh -huh. first year. This is 2017? 2017. 2017. Right. Like, so you yeah. right back in the mix. Yeah, right back in the mix. And uh, um, hop into it. And dude, it, that was tough. That was super tough. Coming I back bet. And playing. Like, oh, fuck. I that, bet, that first dude. training camp, like my neck, every time I would try to hit somebody, it was just like... Brutal. You know what I mean? There's, you, can't, you can't mimic that in the weight room. You can't no, dude, like, not hit like that. You know, you're down there, you're trying to block JJ and you're trying, you know, and you're like, Man, I'm 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 a bit rusty. I'm a bit rusty right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, man. Hands, so I was off for sloppy. four weeks and I felt yeah. rusty. You know I can't mean? imagine. The hands were sloppy. Like the the tempo. I'm like man, this is this is the NFL. You know, this is you gotta you gotta you gotta step your shit up. No yeah. doubt. And so they did. They put me on practice squad, but then I came back and played the end they, of that so year. So on seventeen, they had you on practice squad. They had me on practice squad at the beginning of the year, uh, and then they activated me at the end. And so that was fun. Mm -hmm. And I played tight end pretty much the that that year and then the xl tight end yeah next year <laughs> they cut me again you know as a new gm and everything and they had drafted some guys and some free agents i wait, was wait, wait, literally wait, wait, sitting wait. there oh, so you're, you got cut and they brought you on p squad right away right away that and first then year by the end of the year uh, they, they activated me they activated you yeah and then the next year you got cut again got after training camp after training camp and then i was just sitting there like pretty bummed like oh man i you know played i thought i'd be part of this again but you know it is like they did you feel good guys. in the camp yeah i felt i felt really you felt solid. like you should have made I it i felt super i felt super solid i felt good but it's the league and uh it's the league and you never know what's gonna happen so i was like sitting there I'm like i don't know what to do so i texted like everybody i i knew that was an oc or a head coach or whatever, and Vrabel had just taken the job. And you know, Vrabel got close in Houston because when I first got diagnosed, he would text me like a few, couple, few times a week, like thinking about you, buddy, like, yeah. you're holding ass back out here. Like, yeah. you know, just like doing, you know here. what I mean? Yeah. Just, just, yeah. just the, the banter Vrabel does and he's great at, and yeah. that was always fun. And then during that three year time, uh, his son, Tyler, who was in high school he was a defensive line when i was when i first when i first saw him down there and i told the i'm like dude he looks exactly like i did just super tall long arms long legs like 
gr- growth spurt too fast for his you know coordination yeah. to catch up mm-hmm. with. I'm like he's a, he's gonna be an O lineman. Like make that switch, and I think they talked about it or whatever. And you know, eventually, like the next year, he's like, "Hey, would you like to you know go through some stuff with Tyler and 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 show him a few drills?" Because I would try to do drills, kind of yeah. line drills every day. And I'm like, "Yeah, hell yeah!" So we kind of went through it and. He was a he was a natural, obviously, and now he's kicking ass at Boston College. <laughs> but that's kind of how me and Vrabel uh, had gotten gotten close throughout those treatments. So I texted him and like, dude, I'm looking for any opportunity. Like, I'm just trying to play ball, man. And he's like, you know, let's take a look at some things. And he flew me in for uh, well, they Titans flew me in for a workout uh, the next week. When and when was this? What point of the year? That was week two. Just after the Miami game, you were there. Yeah. And uh, they're like, dude, we're going to sign you to practice squad. I'm like, not ideal, but, dude, any opportunity, you know what I mean? Yeah, keep, just to get your foot in the door. Stay in the arena. Like, I just want to keep working. Like, I just keep feeling better and better mm-hmm. and better. And uh, so I'm like, let's let's do it. And, yeah, that was dope. <laughs> and it is. And uh, I remember the text I got from you after, after that Fuck night. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, and... Boom, they're like, signed practice squad, and I just... When, right, when, whatever, when, keep when that, did keep Titans sign you on practice squad? That was week two. Week two, 2018. Yeah, 2018. They signed you Listen on the practice that. squad, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. When did they activate him? Oh, I don't think was, you it activated. wasn't that year. At yeah, all he was year. activated. Oh, you were, you were team squad the entire, the year. entire year. No, 2019. And then th- this year, boom, made the squad. Scored the touchdown. Let's they fucking go. The next week or whatever. Dude, it was... It was the and, week I got uh, back, right? Yeah, the week after you got back. And then Which was a huge bummer. Yeah, it sucked, but Dude, that was such a cool you the th- best part about like so this is against the Colts, aka the most the hottest game you've ever probably played in, right? Yeah, that, that was a score. Yeah. Game. I was literally getting this tattoo on my hand watching this game. Yeah. Thinking, was, oh shit, that looks hot as fuck out there. Like hundred something degrees. Dude, brutal. And but he snipped it, dude. Like it was behind you and you like turned and got that thing, man. It was awesome. Yeah, How had, dope was that scoring a, a touchdown? This. Oh, this was sick, man. It was so they put this in, you know, Friday, and there was four Bates. And, no. Yeah. Darren Bates. Yeah, he was at fullback right there. That's where he lined up. And hey, DB's out there? Yeah. That's go him. go to like the middle. <laughs> right go there. to where the yeah, other view. Yeah, we're going out to the flat. And so they <laughs> No, no, keep going the other way. So I was t- Yeah, that way. Yeah. I was telling my wife on Saturday, like, yeah, they put a play Pause in it. going out on a route. Bates and, uh, is right here. That's Bates? That's Bates. Bates, the fullback. Look at him, dude. Let's go. And that's Derek. And they're all looking for at Delaney going the other way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I told my wife, I'm like, there's a chance I could possibly get it, but they're going to all, everyone's going to look at Delaney. Bates going to be wide open. It's going to yeah. go to Bates. But who knows? You know what I mean? Who knows Who knows what will happen? Oh, that's so and wicked. And I doubt they even play it because it was like down the list on the on the play call. So I'm yeah. like, ah, let's see. And sure as shit, we get down there first time on the goal line. Hey, this is it. Arthur Qu- calls Qu- Qu- it. Qu- Qu- running out. And uh, I release and I look back and I see Marcus like look at Bates. See Derek fall down because he chop blocked that dude. And then he looked right at me, and I was wide open. I'm like, oh, he's about to throw me this ball right now. Were you nervous? And then next thing you know, like, there it is. And Put I'm it like, up. Don't, don't drop this shit. <laughs> and uh, Don't drop this. It was a good block. It. Dude, it was, like, a really well done. Because you get in there. Who's that? Sell it. Boom. Sell it. Oh, sell it. Sell it. Snip. Go get that thing. Yo, that's Dude. dope, man. Yeah, so that, boy's that got was, hands. That, that was just, like, a super cool moment. For me, Full circle, wife. dude. Dude, yeah, full yeah, fucking I mean, like, circle, everything kind of coming back, like. Bro, like, you just score a touchdown in the NFL like this. In 2019, so after sweet. going through years of fucking, go- oh my god, Timo and just grinding, and that's so, wild, man. I, I was that was super cool to be able to put that up on the mantle and like a moment for me and my family. And Hell my yeah! Mm-hmm. Was uh, who was at the game? My wife and her and her brother and his wife. And they didn't even know. I didn't even tell them. So I'm like, eh, probably not going to happen. Yeah, you just told your wife. So like, not going to ah. get their hopes up. I'm like, there's a there's a chance, but like, yeah, yeah. it's very small. God, I would have yeah, I would have sure my hopes shit. up right away. Right there, early. Yeah, I'm just glad it was early because by the end of it, my hands were just so sweaty and the gloves were wet. Those leather like, gloves too. Like, and they get like, wet. First over. down, just snag oh, yeah. it. First touchdown of the year at Nissan. How about that? That's pretty rad. Yeah, that's really rad, dude. dude that is a rad fucking love story. It. Love, love Arthur's 
play calling on the for getting the big Dude, man he love, he huh? loves getting offensive lineman touchdowns. I mean, yes. you, how many big man touchdowns do you guys have this year? Like three? three? We had four in. It was one for Taylor. Yeah. Well, they, they hey, cut that part out. Cut that part out. Can't let people know. Can't let people know. We had three, three in. We had three touch. Uh, three three plays in. But it was like. Well, we got Dennis three. got two. Got Dennis three. got two. You got one. Yeah. Man, who knows? Who knows? Couple I others. remember when we were playing you guys. I was like, hey, if we're on goal line and Taylor's eligible. Cover him because he's getting the ball. Yeah. That's like what I was thinking. I was like, the boy says he's got a play in like a couple weeks back. <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you fucking. Oh, snitch you so out of there, dude. Dude. Bro, you're going to you're gonna take away my touchdown? Damn. Oh, I would have handed you. I would have guarded the shit out of you. I would have handed you. Oh, Is there dude. something wrong with my mic? It doesn't yeah. sound like it's. No, I think you're good. It's good? Yeah. Man. Well, anyway, I don't even know what we need to talk about anything else, dude. This this has been one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, you come absolutely, in here, dude. Like just have an opportunity to talk, yeah, pick dude. your brain about like that whole thing. People, we go through adversity all day. during a season. You go through adversity. Like it's bad games, yeah. but no, not not well, life. Very everybody, many everybody has yeah has some. You know what I mean? And my mine just happens to be something that is super gnarly. Like it's wild, you know, and absolutely wild. And I and I'm I'm glad it's not like a. I mean, it is a super public thing, but I'm I'm glad I can kind of tell my story on a podcast like yours. It's actually like legit like dude there's been a busting with the boys banner at every away game this year man you guys <laughs> yeah. are killing it by the way that's dope yeah, i'm glad, you noticed. Dope. I'm glad dope. you noticed but uh you know just come on and like share it genuinely because the people that do know my story like people whose families or, or kids that are going through it like it's powerful to them like when i was going through it i was always looking for like survivor stories like guys that have gone through treatments and gone to run iron man or gone on to you know play ball or gone right. on to play yeah you know play their, their respective sports at a high level like that was always something that helped keep me motivated and so like if i can do that for someone else like something i might take seriously and i mean you definitely are bro you beat you, know, you beat fucking like, it's like uh, you there's like eric berry yeah herslich i've got yeah, yeah i've gotten to hear those guys speak too and it's just it's just insane man yeah it's it's a wild it's a wild ride it's something i pray that eventually that people aren't gonna have to go through it you know there's gonna yeah. be a, a cure someday i mean uh that's not like kind of what i went through or something a little more or cause for it or just figuring out and they're working on it they're getting close they're getting close and but you think you think it's within our lifetime i pray man i pray no one's got to go through what the, what i went through or if yeah was going through, mm -hmm. went through but um it's it's uh it's something that i'm i'm proud of like i'm proud to be it but it's not something that i throw out there a lot but it's not something i'm gonna shy away from that's kind of like how i yeah, yeah i mean I think, I be, whether you like it or not like you have exactly. a story that truly yeah can impact people if i can help you know people, not in like a bragging serious. way and that's why i don't want to that's why i don't want to say like it was easy like it wasn't easy like it was really hard like there were some days where i couldn't even get out of bed man like you probably didn't want to that was like, it i, I didn't want to this, dude some days i couldn't eat like they're like and I don't want somebody who's going through it to think like, oh man, look look how easy it was for him to like beat and come back. Like, no, it was not easy. Like, right. it was, that was really hard. And that's okay. You know, it's okay to be like, I'm not getting out of bed today. Right. Like, I'm, like when you're going through it, like, I don't got the energy for that. Like, that's that's okay. Like, you know what? You're, you're fighting your ass off. Like, you can have days and times like that, but you just right. got to keep, you just got to keep going. You Do you think it was important going. for you to get moving sometimes just to like, yeah stay oh, in the right sure. mental mental space for sure like even if i feel like shit i gotta get up i gotta do some sort of walk even if it's just walking around yeah the hospital lot do a lap yeah that 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 helps that helps too that mm -hmm. always helps but sometimes you don't even got sometimes you, don't you got, got enough it. in the tank for that yeah so, uh, that's just brutal to think about like you're such you're this this big dominating figure like you're a big dude you know what i'm saying you're yeah. strong as shit and to think about like you couldn't even get out of bed to take a walk like take a lap yeah. is, is a crazy concept it's to even I, swallow i don't, don't want to sugarcoat like my story or like that it was easy or nothing you know mm -hmm. i take it i take it seriously when people no doubt when people talk about it or ask me it's just i don't know it's it's hard to see like kids go through that stuff too i yeah. i can't believe it like it I'm, is. It, it, that's brutal and, and it's tough to see the families because they're just sitting there kind of helpless you know mm -hmm. that's always a super I know it's like all they can do Super is tough moment. Like pray yeah. or try and give you words of encouragement or yeah. try to read you and be yeah. like, what kind of energy should I give them today? But you know. it's wild, man. And you just never, 
you also you talk about you don't shy away from telling the story but you're never like out front of it but also at the same time like you never know who's watching whether it seems like the story's cool or not somebody's in the background kind of observing you regardless like taylor's sitting here saying like i notice it watching you on the field like carrying yourself he might not ever tell you that but you just know like people are watching yeah. and you're affecting them you know what i mean like yeah. this guy kind of had this story i hear this rumor and he's watching like yo this this dude inspires me to go a little harder sometimes. It's not you know even, I mean? well, but it's not. I don't look at. I don't look at you and go. That's David Questenberry. He 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 beat cancer. Like I, I just see the way you handle yourself on a day to day basis, and like you know me. You know I'm like Mister. Some I'm pretty much bipolar in a lot of ways. Like there will be days I'm up high, as of days I'm pretty down low. <laughs> but I, but the effort, oh, I, yeah, I, I give yeah. effort during practice, but absolutely, I'm still like absolutely. fuck this or whatever. Right. And it's like consistency as a human being is one of the hardest things to obtain, and like. Oh. To watch you go through what you did, it's not like the first thing on my mind every time I see you, oh, yeah. but dude, the consistency that you operate at um, that. from like August into middle of January, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter how many that, snaps man. a person plays, that stuff weighs on you. Yeah. And so it, it, it's it's good to have around. It's really, it's, it's, yeah, I, it's, you it's know, important. I, tell you I do. I, I just love it, Taylor. You know what I mean? I love the group we got. We got a good group, dude. We got a solid group. I love coming in and just working my craft like that. I love being a lineman. Like, I mm. love, everything about it you know and i think we got a good thing going dude i think we got a really good thing going in 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 tennessee we got, got a really fun group like that vegas trip are you kidding that was awesome that was a blast dude and and just me being able to like stay in the arena stay in the fight like i'm gonna go as long as i can you mm -hmm. know and i'm gonna give it everything i got every day for as long as i can and you know I, i'm out there trying to kill, kill myself at practice and i love it you know yeah. i just that's 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 me and i'm I'd like to say I was that way before I got diagnosed, but I'm sure even now it's like, it's even more, you know, I just. Yeah, you, you've had to look something in the eye that a lot of people well, don't have to. Oof, you know, they, they, they never I'm really have they to never see. Do, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a tough, tough thing. Yeah, to that's conquer, true but. too. And you had to look in the eye and and no one's coming to save you. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, yeah. it's like you. Through. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that's amazing. It was, it was tough, but. No. Well, but we're in a good spot now, man. I got. I got a dog. I got a wife. Dope you know, dog. Just staring me in the eyes right sign now. Sign back with Tennessee. So be here next year to That's rad. throw down, you know. For the boys. For, For the, the boys. boys. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm stoked I'm to have you back. I'm in a good spot, back. man. I'm, um, I, really, I really like where we're at right now. Shit, you know, come on the bus with the boys, hang out a little bit. What do you think about the bus? I'm impressed, man. This is, this is actually a pretty good setup you got here. It's, yeah, I feel like people think it's way more janky than it actually is. Yeah, it's we a got a D setup. setup. It's a D setup, man. Yeah, it's a D setup. Like I, I, you were saying, like, oh, it's cool. You saw people with the away games. I was telling Taylor, I was like, I was out on the field. We were playing the Chiefs, and Fisher, their left tackle, I was like in my stance, and he's like, "Hey, busting with the boys." Yeah, and I was like, no. I was, I was like, like oh, oh, sick. And then yeah. after he's like, "Hey, when, when do I get on the podcast?" <laughs> I was just thinking in my head, like, yeah, yeah, let's just talk after the game. I was like, this is fucking dope, though, that it's happening. Yeah, you're crazy. saying that stuff. It's starting. Everyone's yeah. on the train. It's a movement, everyone's everyone's baby. trying to get on the bus. Dude, get on the bus. Everyone's invited, dude. Yeah. Everyone's definitely invited. And we appreciate you coming on, dude. Yeah, Thank this you was very awesome, much. man. Oh, my pleasure, guys. Yeah, the Vrabel thing was really coming back around. That, that gave you a lot of a lot of clout in the media. Yeah. Huh? And one more game, dude. One more, dude. Game. One more fucking been, game. One more, I, I would have showed crazy. up. I would have showed up in a nurse, like a, a surgeon's outfit, <laughs> a on, like going into the locker room with a giant machete in my hand before the game. Dude, that thing got a lot of. Did you see the uh, um, Gridiron Heights yeah, video? Saw it. That shit was hilarious. He's like, too. what's up, fellas? I will cut off my dick to beat you. Vrabel, no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's y'all, hey, man. He, that's he, throws, time. he throws the blurred version of the yeah, penis like the, on the, the table. Piece. He like flops on there. Uh, the, hey, the, hey, uh, Gridiron Heights definitely did him a lot of favors. That's a big piece. That's a big piece. That's a big piece. Yeah, right there, yeah. Dude. I told Taylor, too, I was like, you guys ended up losing when he cleared the air and said he wasn't really going to do He was just trying to give us something on the bus. He didn't want to let us down. And sure enough, he, 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 I can't believe he said that. The boys lost. And that's, I, I think that's what happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> you should have you you kept saying, yeah, I'm ready to cut this thing off after we went beat the Chiefs. You guys might have, you know. Man. We should have beat the Chiefs too. Like the way like that game went. It's crazy because week 10, we were like up by 10. Or they were yeah. up by 10 and we ended up Came winning. Back. And I remember being the first quarter, we were up by 10 and I was like, fuck. And I thought that was like, fuck, we're up by 10 this time. Like it was a weird setup. Yeah. Charles like, hey, look in the, the Miami. And I was like, don't jinx them. I text her back later, dot, 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 dot. 
<laughs> you jinxed him, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that, that it was going, one. dude. It was so it, like that. That um, the run. I mean, the whole game. You never lose a game by like one play, right? Yeah. But like the run going into half that Mahomes had. Yeah, that was big. Yeah, because they, the right? they got the they got the ball back at half. They doubled up. Because I, I looked at Ben. Up, they deferred. Because yeah. they were up by. Was it tied? Half. It was seventeen seventeen. I think it was seventeen seventeen. No, you're right. It was seventeen fourteen. No. Yeah, because I looked. How'd you get four points after you had ten? So I'm off. I'm off on something. Maybe 21-17? No, 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 no. We had we scored three the first drive, seven the second drive, seven the um the third drive. So we had 17 points. Oh, they had 14. They had 14. Okay. And I, I remember looking at Ben Jones and I was like, it's gonna be 17-17 at half. I was like, perfect, dude. We're even with the best offense in the league at halftime. And we're like, we are like statistically the best second half team. Yeah. And then they scored. I was like, fuck. I know. And that was oh. I was that, pissed that, off that, watching that, that play. That scramble he had down the yeah, sideline. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a couple there at damn. the end where you're just like, e -e 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 -e. Yeah. you know. He ran out, like ran out to the right and like just hail Mary that thing down the middle. Yeah. But he caught it. Was that like Sammy Watkins caught it on like the 10 yard line? Yeah, I'm still that was a fucking still heartbreaker, dude. Out from that one, man. yeah, that dude. Brutal. Well, you caught a bunch of uh, hype from I was some Good pub. Morning America. Yeah, Good Morning <laughs> good Football. Mor good Morning Football, football for the yeah, hype dude. man on the side. Shout out to Good Morning Football. No free shout outs. That was that was. Fun. Yo, Good Morning that Football was, fun, was about was the boys run. this whole season, dude. They were showing um, Derek's like stiff arm, and Kyle Brandt, who is one of my favorite people to watch going rants, yeah. is like, you see this guy though. This guy's in snow sleeves. Uh, look at Quiz shorts. out there. Dude, Quiz got the, <laughs> he's got the perfect like the quarter cut. Like it's dude. not sleeveless. It's got like a little tiny baby sleeve. Yeah. Like that like that eighties strength coach, dude. You were born too late. A like, year an eighties guy through <laughs> and through. Born too you were born too late. Like too late bro. Yeah, no. Dude, yeah. Well, they they came up to me, Arthur and, and Raves did, like after the Denver game. They're like, Quiz, we just miss your presence on the sideline, bro. Like they said that? Yeah. Hell like, yeah. You're, you're, coming, you're coming to all the away games. I was like, let's do it. Cool. They like my yeah. presence? I'm like, I'm yeah. going to go full meathead, man. Cut yeah. off bicep Dude. curls before the game. You were hitting those curls hard, gassed too. Gassed up. Just, just There's a couple games like I was like, kind of like, man, I need to get a little pump. And I'd see you doing it. I'd go grab a band. And I'd, oh, we, we, by the end of the year, we, we had a good group of guys. Got to keep that piece going, dude. Just, <laughs> get, 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 the just get a little right. vein work in there. Like, yeah. oh, we're solid. A little vein. <laughs> a little good morning, vein football. Work. You got questions up there. Correct it. What do you guys enjoy more, run block or pass block, from our fellow friend Jake Disher? Run all day. Yeah, probably run. Pass blocking stressful, dude. It's stressful. Third down, three Man, jet. D linemen are good. Yeah, they are. <laughs> these linemen are good. How difficult is to make the midseason switch from protecting Mariota to Tannehill? Is there even a difference? No, not really. I didn't notice a difference between protecting Mariota Mario and Tannehill. It's kind of like it's not like you try harder for one or the other. You know right. what I'm saying? I mean, like you it's your, your best job, no matter what. Yeah. Like I love both those guys, yeah. but let's say I didn't like one of those guys. I'd still block just as hard. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Yeah. What's it like playing with Taylor from uh, Hans Rivera? I think Taylor said it. You never know what you're going to get with Taylor when he comes in in the morning. <laughs> he said, I think Taylor just, said it. He's like, he like <laughs> comes in and someone will say something to him, like uh, a coach or something will just say one thing to him. And he comes in, he's like, well, my day's ruined. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, we're in for a long one. You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly you know, what you're you know talking, what I'm about. talking about. Or some days he comes in and he's like, man, I slept great. And it's just like the most awesome day ever. But Dude, I don't do well with authority. <laughs> I do not do well with authority. When, when people are on my case, I'm like, fuck oh, everybody, dude. dude. Yeah. First thing in the morning, too, you haven't even had a cup of coffee or dude, breakfast. It's like I'm seven, like, just 7.30. Into him. Like, Meetings man. start at 8, Keith, not 7.30. And I'd go in early at 7.30 and they say something to me, fucking day's ruined. <laughs> fucking day is ruined. And I mean it as a joke, but then it ends up being real. <laughs> I always start off by being like, no, fuck, I'm kidding, guys. And then like something in my head's like, but you're not kidding, Taylor. <laughs> so you want to kill these motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's, it's a lot oh, of fun because there's, just, there's so much like energy surrounding this guy. You know. Yeah. I mean, like there's just like, every day and so... Like it's always, we got action every day. Man. There's action, action baby. some so, way, so, form hey, we got action. Yeah. We got action. We got action. And so I'm, I'm about it, man. That, that is always fun. The, um, we were when we, after we played Baltimore, Keith came in. He's like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but keep doing it. Like, keep everything the same. Like, there's gonna be day. I'm in a weird mood. 
There's gonna be day at Taylor's in a weird fucking mood. That's what he like, said. Yeah, it's he's no, like it's no. Which yeah. put me in a bad mood. Fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't look no. at me like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't look at me like that. <laughs> God, dude, I can get a little bipolar though, for real. Only when Nate doesn't do what he's supposed to. That's like a big yeah. Thing. Nate Nate started out as the worst rookie ever. Ended as the second worst rookie ever, dude. He like gained. He did better. He went up. He went up. He Just did barely. better. He was great in Vegas. He was, he was great in Vegas. Vegas. He did a good job. He hung out with the he boys. He got tickled turkey a couple times. Not very good at categories, but... Awful at categories. We were, we were playing categories. You never play King's Cup? Yeah. We get to categories. And it was you, right? You're like names of or names of just countries. countries. Any just countries, countries in any general. Any country in the world. He's the first person, says North America. <laughs> and we're like, yo, <laughs> just sit like it's a I'm continent. Like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 I don't understand. No, no. I, wait, I would understand like, if you said Africa. Like, if you said Africa, like... Like, like that's you're not from there you don't live in that area like i've said that before yeah and you know but like i get to antarctica like that's a continent yeah <laughs> but like north america oh, like, you're talking oh. about um you're talking about the place you live <laughs> on a, I, like you born there then that's the one you went with that's like, crazy that's, that's bro a that's a tough answer but what was it like being on hard knocks with the texans Ugh. uh Wait, were you on? Were you? Were you? Yeah, they they went to the hospital with me. And we did all that. Yeah. Oh really? Me so out. you didn't come to Washington? No, I was in Washington. Were you playing? Pricing? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was. I was, I was going through my stuff. Yeah, that was epic. Huh? That yeah, was, the, uh, yo, yeah, yeah, that was epic. That, that was, was you guys. That was all you guys. <laughs> that was for sure. <laughs> through the day before. I know. Everybody was like, "Yo, the coaches were like, or were they like pissed yeah, off or something?" Yo, did you he guys? Was pissed because we landed off the plane straight to practice. And Which it, is it, the it most uns- one of the most unsafe things it's you can do. It's the worst. It's the worst, and it, and it was a really shitty practice, and they kicked our ass. And uh, then the next night in the meetings, it was like, I'm not saying fight, but I'm not saying not fight. <laughs> like, I want my team to be a bunch of badasses, and everyone's like, fight tomorrow. I guess it's about to go down. You know <laughs> Holy I mean? sure, shit! Sure as shit, like it went down. They it called, worked they, though. Everybody fought. They split us up. And then practice, really finish was practice. Over. practice was over, dude. See really? Ya. Yeah. So we got to go leave early, which we thought it was awesome. Yeah. What a gig. Yeah. If it, if it's like, hey, don't fight or we're going to end the practice early. I'm swinging the first throw. I'm swinging first. That's usually how Just it get works. to leave. It was. Yeah. It was, I can't it even. Was a, it was a big, it was a big rumble. Dude, I remember seeing like some video footage. Of Vince Wilfork almost connected with somebody on some huge haymaker. And I was like, God. that person yeah. would have died. Might have, yeah, for real. Vince is a huge, huge man. And that body was off the ground throwing a haymaker. He just missed. Really? I was like, yeah, yeah. He would have killed somebody had he connected with it. That would have been insane. But yeah, that was a a good scrap. That was a good scrap. He fucked that center up too. I I saw a video of like Vince taking the Redskins. They were doing a one-on-ones and took the Redskins center like yeah, just bull ten yards like, oh, past uh, the dummy, past the whatever. Corey Lichtensteiger, probably Corey Lichtensteiger. So. He's like an undersized center too. Yeah, he got smokehouse. Dummy dude, dude. just on skates. Yeah. Slapped and tickled. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Shit happens, dude. People get got Shit all the time. Yeah, people, people get, get got, got all the time. That's all. That's pretty much all Vince has got right there. But that bull. If, if he if he hits dude, you with it's it, a big human, dude. Massive, bro. He's massive. It's a big fucking human being. He, he was. I hit him one time. I got a stinger, and he didn't even see me coming. You know what I'm saying? I ripped in there and boom! I was like, oh, "Fuck!" And he was like, it's "Like, oh, so I'm hit one my back!" Man. Like, he like yeah. he didn't even feel me, dude. What else we got? We got two more. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, we gotta roll. I gotta roll one minute. What well, workout nah, routines? It. I mean, it's probably usual, right? Scaled up. You, you just yeah, you just you just grind work, it. and you then whenever grind. you're fu- yeah. <laughs> what else we got? What, what is what is that last question? Does David ever get cold? Never. I'm never cold, dude. <laughs> PB right. I, did, out? I did more sweats in, in yeah, Kansas City. You kind of yeah, sold out. Kind of cold. You were wearing you I were wearing the short the, shorts, the short shorts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You sold out. City, dude, Kansas City was too cold, man. It was freezing. I still went sleeveless. You're the guy that would go like sleeveless, sleeveless, and shorts like every game. Every no game, matter the weather, look good too. Just he had he had his wrist taped. Yes. For what? You know what I'm saying? Hey, I like you that, look at dude. him and go, Why? Hey, I like that. Why? You should have painted your face. You should have painted your ready. face, too. No, oh, I, shit. I, uh, that cool. Well, I would do the workout with Keith before on the yeah. field. And then I just wouldn't take him off. I'm like, you'll be you'll be, you'll zone. be playing next year, but if there's ever a game, you need to have like a milk carton with you. And just oh, hold the milk carton, walk idea. around, and just fucking drink right out of the milk carton. Love it. And put tape over and write badger milk. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's walk solid. around like that. Or dude. just or just drink badger milk. They sell that? Maybe. We can find out. No free shout out, shout out to badger milk. <laughs> All right. All right, that's a wrap. Good David, deal. I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you, no. bro. Thank you.